Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's uh, Burn Fire video. Okay, let's have a look at whether it's 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take you to the 23rd of July. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with the Exchange uh, GFS and ECM on Charles Bay Runs around a couple of weeks. Uh, and we'll have a look at CFS B2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. We'll get us uh, into uh, August. So I'll get on back for you in a moment. Just say the first year today was our 6 a.m. upload. And if that was enough, we've also uh, released a look at the JMA seasonal model as well, going through August, September, and October. So check out those two. If you'd like to see that, please like, share, subscribe on the video. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, for you that, I hope you're having a lovely, lovely Wednesday uh, as well. Right, so you can start our centering temperature. The CT is currently standing at 17.0, which is around one degree above average. And that's provisional to yesterday, the 12th of uh, July. Turning out to be a very warm uh, month. And of course, we've got lots of hot weather still to come. So I reckon that's going to be rocketing up into the 18s before we know it. And uh, it'll be interesting to see where we finish up by month's end, but it's certainly turning out to be uh, yet another warmer than average month. Of course, June came out at 14.9. It wasn't excessively warm, just 0.8 of a degree above average, but we have this long run through February, March, April and May, where we're like 2 or 3 degrees uh, above average a lot of the time. January was closer to normal at uh, 4.7, which again is just 0.8 of a degree above average. But everyone, so far this, uh, this year has been uh, a little bit above average in terms of 61 to 1990. Anyway, it looks like we're going to have another significantly more of an average month for July too. These are the GFS upper air temperature amplification ensembles for the next couple of weeks. Whoops, let's get rid of that. Um, so, uh, this is what it shall for today. Uh, so, the red night is the third year upper air temperature average for Charles. We're starting off. Close to average at the moment, we are actually going to see the upper air temperature dipping down a little bit, but it will remain relatively warm, I think, for the remainder of this week. And then into the weekend, of course, we see the temperatures, upper air temperatures, really lift up another heat spike on. We've been talking about it a lot in videos over the past week or two. It's very well modeled, actually, by the GFS sys. And, uh, and yeah, it's still there, you know, uh, around the early part of next week, heat spike, take the temperature up to upper air temperature up to 20 degrees. In late 26 days, some of those ensemble members are going even hotter than that. So, uh, again, that's sort of translating on the surface. Temperature probably into the mid to upper 30 Celsius. And uh, we're going to be not all that far from record-breaking heat, I think, through the early part of next week. It is relatively brief. We go through the uh, second half next week and we get a cool down. Uh, and we must go to the average then. And that's how you go through the last week of July as well, relatively close to average too. So case wise, going to be a lot of dry weather over the next few days. When we get this heat spike to make cool down, we might get a bit of thunder in with that, although it doesn't look all that wet, to be honest. It doesn't look like a classic thundery breakdown from that on some ground. But of course, it's early days on that. Wait and see. And after that, maybe a little bit more showering through the last week of uh, July. Temperature anomalies on the 13th to 21st of July coming out above average, a warm and average week, hot and average week coming up. Precipitation anomalies on the 13th to 21st of July, they coming out drier than normal too. I just went for that from Earth, nolschool.net, shows that bringing a fresher west northwest wind today. So uh, it's very warm, very pleasant day actually out uh, today. Uh, plenty of sunshine, uh, warm temperatures, but feeling fresher in that uh, wind coming in from off the Atlantic Ocean. Right, so let's go through the all-important chart, day three, see what's happening with this week's spike. So this is how you can make your run. It's looking for midnight on Saturday under an area of high pressure then. Lots of dry, fine weather to come for this weekend. As that high pressure eases its way eastwards, it will start to pull in the wind from like a southerly or a southeasterly direction. Up comes those southerly southeast winds that bring heat up from off the continent. We have a... A, a bubble, a, a dome, a very hot air, a heat dome, and so that's how your prayer temperatures look as you get to midnight on Tuesday. Very hot then, with plus 20 cells ice firms surging northwards uh, across the country. It triggers a thundery area of low pressure, that heat and humidity, so by the time you get through to the middle next week, very hot, yes, but uh, uh, it's like a melting pot of, uh, uh, of humidity and heat, triggering potentially thunderstorms. We'll have to wait and see how widespread those storms are. But even to be die on Wednesday next week, still looking very hot, particularly in that southeastern corner. Icon looks like that again. High pressure going to be in control of weather. 
on Saturday and through into uh, Sunday and Monday. That high pressure easing its way east was pulling up this very warm or hot southerly wind. Going to be bringing lots of heat humidity up from the south and potentially this thundery area of low pressure around Biscay to upper air temperatures look like that. Plus 20 Celsius ice going to get into the south at midnight on uh, Tuesday. And then that thundery low pushes northwards as we go from Tuesday into Wednesday. Very hot in that southeastern corner on uh, Tuesday with plus 20 Celsius isotherm. Uh, then that thundery shot just begins to ease its way eastwards a little bit by the middle of next week. Possibly start to pull it in something a little bit cooler into more northern and northwestern regions, a little bit fresher then. But same as the middle next week, looking very warm or hot. Uh, GFS uh, midnight run looks like that again. High pressure is going to be dominating weather on Saturday. That high pressure gradually easing its way eastwards for the open part of next week, bringing up the wind from that southerly or southeasterly direction. Up comes the plus 20 Celsius isotherm across England and Wales, so becoming very hot through the early part of next week. This is going to be approaching um, like upper 30 Celsius with that uh, 20, plus 20 Celsius isotherm. Probably fall just short of 40 degrees, but, you know, it's certainly going to be very, very hot, I think, through the early part of next week. That goes without saying. Um, through the middle of next week, that thundery shot about and begins to push the uh, extreme heat away from us. Temperatures begin to cool down and wind turn into the north again. Not sure you'll be all that much away the thunder. We still have a lot of anti-cyclonic influences going on here all the way up to day 10. And by day 10, it looks like we're actually having to go pulling the heat back up from the south again. Look at that. High pressure back to our east. No fungi low around Biscay. And it looks like we're returning back to square one. That's 23rd of July. This is time, you know, uh, we do get a proper breakdown as low pressure then develops in situ over the top of the coach. That area of low pressure then bring showers or longer spells of rain in from off the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, a lot cooler uh, with that as well. Let's have a temperature forecast looks for the open next week. It's Monday's afternoon temperatures up to 36 degrees in some of these eastern areas. Um, that's approaching July temperature records, even hotter though, on uh, Tuesday 19th next week. Temperatures up to 37 or 38 degrees. That is approaching all-time record temperatures. You might be able to add a degree on uh, as well. Maybe get 39. Notice that uh, Northern France, again, many areas are up to 40 degrees, so we're not all that far away from 40 degrees there. Next year, it's an extremely hot day on the GFS uh, midnight run. Uh, it's our GFS 6 days. Look again, high pressure is controlling weather on Saturday. That area is high pressure. Gradually swing its way eastward through the open of next week, bringing up the wing from that very hot southerly direction. Up comes the plus 20 Celsius isotherm uh, as well. A thundery area of low pressure begins to develop within that melting pot of heat and humidity over and to the west of the country. Again, there's a plus 20 Celsius isotherm get up to some parts of Scotland uh, by Tuesday, 6 a.m. Tuesday. That is extremely hot. Um, yet the plus 20 Celsius isotherm that far north, it's very unusual. Um, by Wednesday next week, that fungi low is starting to push across the country, probably taking first storms with it, and, um, and maybe uh, clearing away uh, the worst of the uh, extreme heat, although it will still be, of course, uh, very warm. By the second half next week, we're into a cooler, fresher regime, still pretty warm, high pressure centred out to our west end, we're bringing the wind from a cooler, fresher northwesterly uh, direction. And the high pressure is right in over the top of the country for day 10 and beyond it uh, really until it begins to break down properly for the last week of July turning cooler, showery and uh, a more unsettled bit some low pressure coming in off the Atlantic temperature forecast based on that GFS 6 run for Monday. So again we've got temperature to 37 degrees there across those eastern areas that is uh, approaching uh, all time uh, temperature records really and it's an even hotter day potentially in the southeast corner on Tuesday, the temperature up to 38 degrees again. That is getting very, very close to all time temperature records. Notice it is beginning to turn cooler though by Tuesday afternoon, out in west of the southwest, turning fresher, and that's as that fungi breakdown starts to take place. Notice again, much of the continent up to 40 degrees, uh, so very extreme heat just on the other side of the channel. We're going to be pretty extreme with the heat though, even if we don't get to 40 degrees, we're going to be pretty extreme. Pretty extreme with that hot weather, uh, I think, um, through uh, Monday and Tuesday next week. If you're enjoying the video, then please go and you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. This is how the uh, GEM is talking again under that big area of high pressure 
on uh, Saturday. Lots of very warm, uh, fine conditions over the weekend. Then the high pressure moving to the east. Let's go through the overall next week. That opens the door to that very, very hot southerly wind. Up comes plus 20 Celsius isotherm. Uh, so very, very hot for the overall next week. Then low pressure breaks it down, turns things thundering. All of that heat and humidity gradually gets pushed away to the east. Uh, we go into the uh, second half next week under a ridge of high pressure. So still lots of dry, fine, very warm weather, to be honest, all the way up toward day 10. The low pressure starts to break through. But the temperature will ease back, uh, I think, through the middle and second half of next week. We'll turn fresher. Temperatures will drop by several degrees after that extreme heat spike. And then we've got the uh, ECFWF, which looks like that. Once more, we're under high pressure on Saturday. That brings lots of dry and uh, very warm weather with it. Then that high pressure eases way eastwards. That's when we pull up those really hot solar winds again. Up comes the plus 20 Celsius ice firm, lifting the temperature into the upper 30 Celsius, probably through uh, Monday and Tuesday. Then a fungy area of low pressure developed within that melting pot of heat and humidity. That pushing its way northwards and eastwards, taking storms uh, across the country. We finish up back under a little bit of a ridge of high pressure uh, by the time we get through day 10. It just begins to turn a bit drier and cooler and fresher uh, by that point. Or, or continue uh, relatively dry, but turning cooler and fresher, I think, uh, through the second half of next week as that fungy low clears heat humidity away. Um, that was quite pleasant actually the high pressure will be maintained main dry warm weather but the temperature will ease back by several degrees this is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tometio.com so uh, showering in the north over the next few days mainly dry though down the south over the weekend looking mostly dry and then early next week we're into those southerly winds very hot temperatures before the storms break out those storms particularly in the west interestingly not as all that much waste storms in the east of the storms are particularly in the northern west area but it's a long way off it's about you know around a week away uh, just under a week away that fungi breakdown so there's a lot to be uh, resolved and, and revealed about that uh, i think these are the options on the table within the, within the uh, ECM ensembles uh, today from the outstanding Met Office. Um, so this is the 23rd of July for day 10. We've got 28 members of the uh, ECM ensembles with a ridge of high pressure out to our west. So still a lot of dry and pretty warm weather with that, but just a little bit cooler as winds are coming in from like western and northwest direction. We have 23 members of the ECM ensembles again with high pressure ridging through the country. Lots of dry and fine weather with that. And a little bit warm, a little bit hotter, I think that too as winds are coming in from like an easterly uh, direction so that probably brings some heat in from off the continent in two weeks time uh this is the option that we got gets 28th of july 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensemble show that the high pressure pulls away from us not particularly low pressure but certainly lower pressure there by the end of uh, july suggesting that we go with something just a little bit cooler and uh, probably a little bit more showery well, I look at CFS uh, V2. So these are 500 millibar high tonnage, broken down into weeks beers. The first week period will take us from the 13th to the 19th of July. The coming week will have high pressure right over top of the country. So you know it's going to be mostly dry and it will be very warm, if not exceptionally hot, by the early part of next week. Uh, week 2 will be the 20th, 26th of July. Again, high pressure sitting just over and to the east of the country, bringing up wind from like a southerly direction. So maintaining very warm conditions you would have thought with that area of high pressure centered just to our east all change of week three which is the 27th of july to 2nd of august then low pressures about to the north of scotland and we go into those westerly winds so becoming cool and showery there for week three or cooler and showery anyway and then uh week four will be the third to the 9th of august with low pressure again centered to our north that brings in wind from the westerly direction and so that also looking rather cool and uh showery there to be honest i'll just leave you with the uh latest warnings from the uk met so uh extreme heat uh warnings have been extended again to a third day so now we've got three days of uh amber uh, extreme heat warnings we've got uh sunday we've got um monday and we've also got tuesday uh, as well so um 
all three days uh, are forecast to be uh, very hot. They're saying a hot spell is likely to about from Sunday, likely peaking early next week, leading to widespread impacts on people and infrastructure. You've got all of the uh, warnings and whatnot uh, that you can read, and I'll leave a link, you know, to to the uh, severe weather warnings page at the UK Met Office. But it uh, it does, you know, it does look quite serious, I think, through the early part of next week with this heat. Um, they're saying temperatures will rise again this weekend, most likely peaking on Monday or Tuesday, then probably declining thereafter. The latest evidence supports the idea of a trend towards a slightly later onset of high temperatures. So some exceptionally high temperatures are possible by both day and night. The culminative, uh, culminative, culminative effects of very warm nights, particularly in urbanised areas, and hot days are likely to bring widespread impacts to people and infrastructure. Uh, although most likely less exceptional, it should be noted that very warm to hot conditions are also probable uh, across the majority of the rest of the UK. So the warning is particularly for like England, just extending into eastern parts of Wales, um, doesn't really extend to like Western Wales, Northern Ireland, Scotland and the far north of England at, at the moment, far um, northwest of England at the moment. But it will still be hot there, um, but the extreme heat is like through... Uh, through those more central southern areas. Anyway, you can have a look at the uh, warnings from uh, the UK Met uh, if you want to do that. The link is in the description. Uh, and we've got three days, as I say, of, uh, of extreme heat warnings uh, from the Met. Right, if you enjoyed the video, then please send you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. Don't forget to tell your friends to subscribe as well. Thank you so much, everyone. And drop a comment. Let's hope you this and all of our videos. We are getting ever closer to 14k subscribers. We've got to put around over 75 now, I think. So, um, so it's really very quick. A lot of interest with this hot weather. Please give us a sub, and thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Tomorrow, we're going to have the 6 a.m. upload. We'll have the uh, European Outlook, and uh, we'll also have a 10 to 14 day routine. We'll bring up date, of course, on all of the heat wave latest developments and whatnot. Um, but uh, that's it for today's video. So, anyway, you enjoy the rest of your uh, Wednesday, and that's all for now. Thanks for watching.